you've read the title. It's time for some real talk with your cloud career mentor. We are going to talk about the three reasons you haven't gotten your first cloud job yet, and more importantly, what you can do to fix it. Understanding these three reasons will help you stand out in your job search, and it will give you a better chance of securing that first cloud job. Welcome to Cloud Career Mentor. I am your host, Fayomi. On this show, we aim to inspire, educate, and motivate you to make the right moves to break into the cloud industry. If you're looking to get your first cloud job, I have a free guide I've created just for you. It's a proven blueprint that walks you through the three simple steps you can take today to make you more attractive as a candidate to potential employers. The link for that is in the show description. I want you to pause this episode, download the guide now, and then come back. Have you downloaded it yet? Good. Now let's jump into the episode and talk about the three reasons you haven't gotten a cloud job yet and what you can do to fix it. The first reason you haven't gotten a cloud job yet is simply because you're not as good as you think you are. I know that's such a hard pill to swallow, but this is a realization I had as well early on in my cloud journey. And by recognizing this, I was able to make the right moves to become a better cloud professional. I don't know your story, but I'm gonna take a guess. Maybe you've been working on your cloud skills for a couple of months. You've probably got a certification or two. Maybe you've even done a bootcamp or some online courses. You will most definitely have more skills than when you first started, but I almost guarantee that you don't have that right mixture of skills that you need to get that first cloud job. The reality is that competition for cloud jobs is really fierce, especially in this economy. You have to be in the top 10% to get an interview, not to even mention a job offer. Employers are actively looking for ways to disqualify candidates because they're getting inundated with resumes. So you need to make sure you have the skills that they need. If you've only done some basic projects like hosting your resume as a static website in S3, I'm sorry to say, but that's just not going to cut it. So what kind of projects do you need to stand out? Well, you need to demonstrate deep experience with AWS networking. You know, sure you've done projects with public and private subnets and you know how they interact with each other. Demonstrate that you understand the scalability of resources by doing projects that involve auto-scaling EC2 instances with CloudWatch alarms. Infrastructure as code is very important to most employers. So make sure you've done some projects that involve Terraform or CloudFormation. CICD automation is the backbone of application deployment. So ensure you've done uh, projects that involve making and managing CICD pipelines. To really stand out, you want to deploy CICD pipelines in multiple environments, such as staging and production, because this reflects how applications are deployed in the real world, not to mention not a lot of other people can do this. So if you can demonstrate that you understand deploying applications in multiple environments, you're definitely gonna stand out. If you'd like to build your hands-on experience with real projects on these technologies and more, check us out at cloudcareermentor.com. Link is in the description. A career in the cloud industry is very well paid and also very fulfilling. However, there is a high demand for these jobs. A lot of people are applying for them. This means that there's a lot of competition and this is why I always emphasize to, you know, improve your skills to stand out. I just want to make sure you're going into this with your eyes open so you can make the right moves to secure that first cloud role. If you're enjoying this so far, make sure you drop a like to let me know. On to the next point. The second reason you haven't gotten a cloud job yet is because you're not communicating your skills effectively. Let's assume you've learned all the technical skills you need to have. A mistake I see a lot of beginners make is not writing those experiences on their resume in a manner that shows the full depth of their skills. They might write something like, I have experience with EC2 RDS S3, and they kind of just leave it at that. And they don't really go into the details or specifics of this experience. I think this is a big mistake. I believe they do this because there's a misconception that, you know, your resume needs to be only one page. I don't actually agree with this. I think that if you're writing relevant points, then your resume can be two or even three pages long. So here's an example of what you could write that that sounds a lot better. So rather than saying, I have experience with EC2 RDS S3, what you can say instead is, I created a VPC with three public subnets and three private subnets. I installed WordPress on an EC2 server, which I placed in a private subnet for security. I also 
created and configured an RDS database, which I also put in a private subnet, and I connected the WordPress server on the EC2 to the RDS database. So you can see you're already painting a picture for the recruiter. You're showing them exactly what you've done, how they interact with each other, and why you've done it. And this gives them an insight into how you work and how you think. Make sure you go into technical detail on your resume because this is the first time a recruiter will have any interaction with you or your skills. So you want to make sure they fully understand how much work you've actually done and, you know, make sure they can see that you're good at this as opposed to maybe something a bit more vague. It's much better to write more than less because, you know, if they scan your CV and they only see simple bullet points, they might not really understand how much work you've put into your cloud journey so far. I know you work hard at this and I don't want all that work to go to waste. Another way I see cloud beginners struggle to communicate effectively is in the interview process. A lot of you are not prepared for basic interview questions. I'm always surprised every time I talk to beginners and I ask them, you know, what AWS projects have they done? And they struggle to give me confident and coherent answers. Before you go to an interview setting, make sure you know what the most common interview questions are and make sure you've prepared and practiced answers to those questions. In my program, I provide a lot of these interview questions. I also show you the best ways to answer them to stand out to hiring managers. So make sure you check out the link to my program in the description below. Remember, the more confident and knowledgeable you come across in the interview, the more likely you are to get hired for that position. So don't forget practicing common interview questions. The third reason you haven't gotten a cloud job is simply because cloud jobs are really difficult to get. I know a lot of online influencers that make it seem really easy to walk into a six figure job where you get free breakfast, lunch and dinner. Unfortunately, this is just not the reality. It requires a lot of skill, perseverance, and a little bit of luck to land that first cloud job. I'm sure if you ask anyone who's a cloud professional right now what their journey was like, they will all tell you the same thing. It was extremely challenging. They will all tell you how many skills they had to learn, how many applications they got rejected from, and how many interviews they had to go on just to secure that one job offer. So just know that it's really challenging. If you want to listen to some of these interviews, just go to your favorite podcast platform and type in Cloud Career Mentor. Subscribe to our channel there. You know, we have a lot of interviews with cloud professionals, so make sure you check that out. The reason I'm telling you just how challenging it is to get that first cloud job is because I don't want you to be surprised, right? Because if you expect something to be easy and the reality is that it's not, you can get demotivated and this will cause you to give up. But I think by going into it, knowing that it is hard, it is challenging, I think that takes a lot of the pressure off because you can just focus on learning the skills and enjoying the journey, right? I really want you to focus on what's important here which is building your technical skills, learning about Linux, learning about Python, having fun, creating things. That's what's important. And if you focus on that, then everything else is secondary. Because if you're only in this for the high salary and because you think it will be an easy way to, to transition into a cool career, you will be disappointed. You know, this is for those who really enjoy the technical journey, who really enjoy troubleshooting. And if you're not up for that kind of challenge, then you won't get far in this industry. I found a really good way of engaging with my technical skills is rather than just following tutorials all the time, once you understand the basics, think of an app or software you'd like to see in the world and begin learning the skills to start building that. Not only will this help you develop your skills and help you stand out to employers, but who knows, you might develop the next brilliant startup. Who knows? In summary, the three reasons why you haven't gotten a cloud job is because you're not good enough, you're not communicating your skills effectively, and getting a cloud job is just really difficult. All of that being said, people are still getting hired for cloud positions. Loads of people are still getting jobs. People in my program are still getting jobs. So there are jobs out there and you can get them. You just need to focus on these three things. Become so good with cloud technology that you stand out from the competition. Learn how to communicate your skills and experiences effectively, both in your resume and in job interviews. Enjoy the process 
because it's going to be challenging, but it's also going to be a lot of fun. And if you enjoy the process of learning, you'll be able to persevere where all others fail and you'll be ready to get that next cloud job. If you haven't been discouraged by the end of this video and you want to persevere because you know you love cloud technology and you really want to get that job in the cloud, check out the free guide in the description below where I walk you through the three simple steps you can take today to get that first cloud job. Make sure you give the video a like if you found it interesting. Why not try one of these videos? You could try that one or that one. I think this one's my favorite. No, no, um, no, this one. Watch this one. Just pick one of them, all right? See you later.